You know, I actually wrote notes for this one. I usually just go off script from the top of my head, but this time I got some things to say. So today I kind of just wanted to chat about life. I am a very secretive person when it comes to my work life, when it comes to, to a certain degree, my personal life. And I figured it was time to spill the tea. If you're wondering, this video is sponsored by me. So it really helped me out if you press the subscribe button, press the like button, so these videos can no longer be sponsored by me. Okay, great. Okay, great. I'm kind of undecided between four different options. I'll probably put them somewhere in here. I usually look at Pinterest for makeup inspiration and I like all four of these. The two of them are more eyeliner based, the other two are more eyeshadow based. I'm kind of leaning more towards the eyeshadow based ones mostly because I don't really have a lot of green liner. I'm feeling the black liner one actually. I think I'm gonna try and do that one. Yeah, I like that. So this month has been pretty big for me as far as new changes goes. Really just like the whole month of April, really kind of into March as well. So I guess in order to talk about the change, I really have got to start at the beginning. I started my current job in October of 2019, I think. So my official title is Bioinformatics education specialist. But like, what does that even mean? I almost never tell anybody that that's what I do because it almost doesn't mean anything. Typically when people ask, I usually just say like, oh, I'm a DNA analyst, or I know my husband Levi, he says that I analyze monkey poop, which is pretty accurate. But for the most part, it's just kind of complicated, you know? So both of those really give kind of a good concept of what I do. And they kind of just put you in the right field, but they really don't completely cover what like my day to day looks like. So I guess if we're going to go there, we're just going to all the way go there. So obviously I work in science and there's really two different camps. There's industry and then there's research. So research is kind of a branch from like the typical capitalist trajectory of science. The contrast of that is actually industry, where you make money off of the things that you know in science. Industry science is like a for-profit company that makes money off of a specialized piece of technology or like a certain process. So this includes like drugs, diagnostics, testing, medical equipment, um, sequencing services, things like that. So like a good example of that would be 23andMe. They basically provide a service and they profit off of their science. So research scientists are funded by the government to discover new things that would be of value to society as a whole. These scientists are often paid less. Research grants actually can be given to for-profit companies but there's just like a whole thing like this is a whole nother story but it's basically it has to do with what they can and can't patent that there's restrictions on that which is kind of out of my league anyway okay but more often than not research is usually conducted by universities and professors that apply for funding they conduct research at their campus the relationship between like the faculty members like professors in science and their campus is basically they need to secure funding to pay for their position and that's something that i just like completely did not know about when i was going to undergraduate basically that means that professors are split 50 50 between teaching and actually doing research they have like all these other responsibilities that include like maintaining a laboratory and maintaining researchers to like actually work in the laboratory. It's really kind of just like a big thing about research that I just absolutely had no idea going into it. So kind of within the academic research world, there's a slight hierarchy in roles. Um, professors are the ones that write the grant applications and actually secure the funding. And they're usually called PIs or principal investigators. 
The PI usually writes into the application a plan of action and what they intend to do if they were to get the research dollars that they're requesting. So like the things that kind of go into a grant like that is like what equipment you would need, who you need to hire to actually get the job done, and what your qualifications are as a professor. Bobby, what is you doing? And obviously this process of like requesting research dollars is really, really competitive. And it's just kind of like professors are always applying for new research dollars. So basically in order to carry out academic research, professors need researchers, right? The people that will actually get in the laboratory and get, get the shit done. Gigi, please stop walking. So in the US at US universities, these people are usually undergraduates or graduate students that actually do the research. For the most part, undergraduates and graduate students do most of, kind of split their time. Obviously, they're responsible for doing some of the analysis and interpretation of the data, but they're also largely responsible or solely responsible for collecting the data itself, like actually in the laboratory, moving biological material around. You know, the kind of just to wrap that all up, like how do I fit into this? What's the point? I was basically hired as a full-time analyst as a part of a grant that brings Oklahoma more research dollars in bioinformatics specifically. So in this capacity, I basically teach bioinformatics, um, but I also analyze data for anyone that needs data to be analyzed at OUHSC. Um, so a little bit of background about that. I received my bachelor's in microbiology, so I know a lot about microbiology, right? But I also spent a lot of time working specifically learning like different scripting languages for biological analysis. So in my role, I'm primarily a microbiome analyst, meaning I analyze DNA samples to determine what bacteria are present and basically like the metabolic potential of the sample. So like a common experiment that I would be a part in would be something like a group of patients is quote unquote normal and a group of patients has some kind of disease. My role would be to determine if there is a significant difference between the microbiomes of the two patients. So really, even with that, I guess we could take that even a little bit further. What's a microbiome and why do we care, right? A microbiome is basically a collection of single cell organisms that basically inhabit a shared space together. And it's really, really important for human health in particular. Microbiomes are essentially everywhere, you know, on our skin, in our bodies. Really, they are a big, big part of what keeps us going. And I think for the most part, people know that to some extent. A lot of times people really don't know like the full extent of that. So, you know, we know about bacteria and we know about probiotics and how they're supposed to be good for us. But there are lots of things that we don't know if they're good for us and we don't know what abundance. So that includes bacteria, that includes archaea, that includes fungus, that includes viruses. So like in the sense of commercial microbiology, probiotics are pretty heavily marketed as a way to balance out your microbial balance, right? Your gut microbial balance. While there is still like a lot of truth in that, there's still a lot that's not really known. So we know that there are bacteria that will inevitably make us sick no matter what the context is, like we're just not supposed to have them. But there are other bacteria that we really don't know if they hurt, if they help, what they help against, protect against, or if it's the other way around, if they cause disease, and to what degree do they cause disease, right? So another big question in the microbiology realm is microbiome imbalance or dysbiosis. Does that cause disease or is it the product of a disease? So that's something that's still being explored and still kind of unknown. So those are basically the basics, what it is, why it matters, how it can help in the future. I work on it, several research projects that involve the microbiome. The main one that I'm working on currently is asking the question, how does pregnancy and diet affect the gut microbiome? So this study is following the pregnancy of baboons, um, and this uses the stool samples as a method for characterizing their gut microbiome at specific time points. I don't work with the animals. I don't work with the poop. I, I really don't do a lot with like actual biological material. For me, I, every few months I basically receive a file of DNA sequences.
It's like basically a string of A's, T's, C's, and G's. And they have meaning. They can actually be mapped back to a bacteria. And it kind of works like a fingerprint. So my job is to map them to what bacteria these sequences came from, count how many of each of them there are, and then use statistics to determine if it's a noticeable difference between the control individuals and the uh, experimental individuals. So for the experiment, like I said, it's about diet and pregnancy, and specifically the diet is high fat. This is basically a model for what is known as the Western diet, which is a high fat diet. So this whole process for a study this size um, takes me about a week to analyze all of the sequences that um, come from each specific time point. So for this study, there's several time points. So in that time, I'm essentially actually doing the analysis itself, like the counting and the mapping, and then generating figures for each of them. So I need to show what the data shows and basically in a readable way. So that project, I really only get data every few months, like maybe two months or so. And like I said, it only takes up a week of my time. So what do I do in the meantime? Recently, I've been preparing lecture materials because like I said, part of my job is teaching a summer course. Um, I basically only teach literally two days out of the year, so it's really not that bad. Okay, so the lectures that I teach are actually on how to analyze microbiome data for people that don't know how to code. So there's options. They're not as good of options if you don't know how to code, but they're options nonetheless. And that's a big problem for a lot of life sciences and biology people. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have been doing a lot of new things, a lot of things that are outside of my usual microbiome analysis skill set. Recently is how to actually review grants. PIs request funding for um, a specific thing for their lab, and then I present my opinion on what I think about their request. So I've been feeling some major imposter syndrome from that, as you could imagine, but I've really been enjoying the change, honestly. Okay, I think I'm going to put on liner and mascara and then come back, and then I'll be right back. So the next thing that has kind of been new and is kind of like on the horizon for what my May day-to-day -day is going to look like is system admin work. So I've basically been tasked with providing BioHSC with a solution for bioinformatics work without coding knowledge. We're currently looking at some server options that I would have to maintain. Do I have some, like some knowledge of? Like I'm not just like completely in the dark, but it's definitely something I've never done before. And it seems like a pretty big task, but I mean, it's kind of more in the month of May. Also, I have a whole year really to figure it out. So <laughs> I have the time. My whole job is basically kind of being like this in-between person um, with knowledge of both like some computer science and some biology, uh, but mostly biology. So yeah, if you're familiar with like managing a server and system admin work, I'd actually really love to hear from you. Maybe just tell me what your experience has been or where you got started or how you got into it really. I think it'd be super interesting. I know it's not really like the most exciting job, but it kind of is, you know, it's kind of a big deal. I think that's pretty much it as far as like what my day-to-day -day has been, plus like what I do, plus what I say I do, <laughs> and what is next for me and the job that I have. So if you have any questions, um, I could really keep like delving into microbiome work pretty extensively. But if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. There's never a bad question. And if you're interested, I could make another video like this if, if it, you're, the, you're just really wanting to know the tea, you know? I think that lots of people have lots of very specific knowledge about, you know, whatever. And it's so interesting when people share like their very specific knowledge about the thing that they're kind of specialize in, you know? Okay, so as for the makeup, I think I'm pretty much done, but I'll give you a close-up. I think the eyes are actually really, really good. They definitely turned out better than I expected. Okay, so I think that's everything. Let me know down below what you'd like to see next from me, especially in this color series. Just comment a color, I'll know what you mean. If you like the video, then go ahead and press the like button. We've talked about this before, you know where it's at. 
just press it. And then also feel free to subscribe for weekly videos from me. I'd really appreciate it. You'd really appreciate seeing me every week. I mean, it's just a good deal, okay? I will see you at the same time, same place, next week. Bye. I always have to tell myself that or else I literally never know. Where are my items? Oh god, I'm gonna fix my foundation. This is kind of hard, actually. <laughs> Cohabit- cohabitate? God, why can't I say that word? I should really be able to say that. Was I done saying what I- saying what I was doing?